So, I don't know. He hasn't capitalised on apparent um, advantages he had here. You know, Ribka really wanted Bishop takes a3. By not taking that pawn, by playing f6 and allowing queen c2, which, which Ribka likes, and now queen a2, which Ribka likes, we have here a position which I've almost equalised. So only at move 23, and I've almost equalised with white. But I give myself another vulnerability now. Um, maybe I'm carried away with the idea of past pawns at the moment. So I, I try and um, advance this pawn. Um, but after c6, you know, he's got a continual threat of rook a6 now. So this pawn is kind of a tactical liability in the short run if it's not going to queen. Um, and black already is now again better. So again, we're at minus 0 0.1 nearly, apparently. So king h1, now rook a6. So he's got the pressure again. And the qu the queen side pawns in this game have been really kind of miserable. This is certainly not how to play the English opening. I played bishop f4, and now he plays g5. So his idea is actually gonna, he's going to play knight g6 and knight f4. So after knight g6, I thought I'd better activate this bishop before it's too late. I sack a pawn. Um, you know, maybe I could have just bishop takes d6, uh, queen takes d6. Maybe, you know, theoretically it's it's not as bad, um, according to Ribko. Say queen b2. Say knight f4 here. Apparently I can just, just play rook f2. But, um, so in, in my mind's eye, this position is kind of, was kind of worse than I'd imagined because I don't really like this idea of the knight being on f4. Black is clearly better, and this bishop is is just looking awful. But you know how is black, you know, cracking uh, white in this position? It's not so clear. So maybe that's what I should have played. You know, just bishop takes d6. I played in this position. I, I played e5. Maybe I've got ideas of of bishop takes c6 if he's not careful with the idea of advancing this pawn. Um, at an opportune moment, but um, after takes bishop e5, queen e5, rook f5, queen e6, I play queen c4, and potentially I've also got now threats of queen takes a6 if b7 ever becomes possible. He plays knight f4, but um, there's a nasty wake up call in this position because I realize now that, um, say, bishop f1 or bishop f3, he's got just simply rook e7 to e3. So in which case these weaknesses will also be called into question. So this isn't great. Really, this isn't great. I play rook f1, and I've already got this idea of just sacking the exchange and playing g5. So I'm trying to generate some counterplay now. It's pretty desperate stuff. I take and g5. He just plays rook e6, and now I play bishop e4. So at least this bishop you know, is doing something finally. Um, unfortunately, this queenside pawn, as well as losing the queenside pawn, this rook becomes a natural, you know, attacking resource to come to b1. So that isn't very pleasant. That I've, my attack is it's kind of hindered because I'm about to be mated myself with black playing rook b1 and f3. So this still isn't great. But uh, maybe the queen to the rescue here. I play queen c1 with the idea of like queen g1. After fg, I play check, and he offers back the exchange, which is a great move. Black's clearly better. Uh, rook, I play queen g1 to try and keep some pieces on. Um, but he takes on g5. And king h8. And black's even better than before, theoretically. King g2. And now he's got less than five minutes left. So that's one of the beauties of club matches. You know, they're not you know, always going to be theoretically um, ended. He plays f3 check. And I really don't want to play um, king takes f3 because that would be a quick uh, simplification with queen f8 check and queen g7 just getting the queens off um, because if bishop f5 then rook b5 and if here just just it gets the queens off and that's very very simple to play so the principle here is to try and make it a little bit difficult for him to play i took the pawn even you know if i am on the verge of, of being mated here so rook b1 rook b2 check king f1 so not king g1, queen h2 is mating. And it's not totally clear how he finishes me off, especially with four minutes on this clock. If his queen you know, moves away, I've, I've got all the, these checks. You know, and I've also got this queen f5 threat. So he's got to be a little bit careful. After check, king g2, he actually offers all. I, I gladly kind of accept it. Um, he's still winning this position. And you know, a win could be achieved 
apparently, you know, say rook a1, I can't ever do queen f5 because of queen g6 check. So here, you know, you know, how do I try and generate some counterplay? Maybe h4 to try and get the pawn to h6. If we quickly look at this, say black was playing casually. Now, if the pawn reaches h6, all of a sudden, Ribka's evaluation has just gone from minus 3 to 0. Uh, basically, black has to force a perpetual check here. It's gone to 0 in two key lines, which shows, you know, white's, you know, uh, attack with h4, h5 maybe would have been a salvation if he had played on. But um, if he plays accurately, like according to Ribka, then, after h5, here, check check queen e6 actually there's a threat now of queen a2 so that's pretty nasty so this h6 is, is now going to be refuted by queen a2 so um th this would this would be it basically um for example rook g1 so i'm gonna um Assuming I don't have to split this video, I'm, I'm going to look at two grandmaster games of how the opening should have been played in this critical position. So this is good for the English opening fans, or you may have already known this. Um, but uh, please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.